Hi. In this video, we'll be tackling the question, what is code? This is a big question. There's a lot, there's a lot to this. So let's, let's dive in and start deconstructing this question, what is code? Well, by definition, code is really just a way to convey useful information as symbols. So really code is just a set of symbols that have meaning, that have useful meaning when read in a predefined way. So if you know how to read the code, you can get meaning out of it. So computer readable code, code that a computer can read is called a program or software. But there are many other types of codes. There's not just computer code. Code is, code is everywhere. For example, we have color codes. When you come to a traffic light, there's a red, a yellow, and a green. And when you see red, you know to interpret that as stop. Red means stop, yellow means slow down, and green means go. So this is encoding useful information as simple colors. Colors are the symbols. We also color code our trash bins sometimes to know how to separate our waste. What's crazy is that our bodies actually are made up of code. Our DNA has genetic code that encodes the instructions for how to make every protein in our body. So when our body needs to make a certain protein, it reads over the DNA and uses that as instructions on how to build the protein. What's crazy is it goes over your DNA and every set of three chemicals in your DNA encodes a specific amino acid that goes on to building the protein. What's crazy, there's even a start and stop triplet. So your body will see this and say, oh, this is where I need to start. It'll see another triplet and say, oh, this is where I need to end. So this is genetic code. It encodes the instructions for building the proteins in our body. We also have Morse code. This is a great example of code. So this is a system that we use for a long time and we still use to send information over long distances using just sound or light. So a short signal, a beep, that's a dot, and a long signal, a beep, that's a dash. And we can encode the entire alphabet using just beeps and dashes, dots and dashes. So for example, SOS is three dots, three dashes, and then three dots. But what's crazy is even this is encoding letters of the English alphabet, and those letters themselves are code. Natural language is code. It's encoding a larger idea. The idea is actually the meaningful information that I want to display, that I want to send out. And in order to get that idea out there, I use language. That is my code. So if I wanted to tell you to get to the store, I would say, oh, to get to the store, you need to head straight for 10 miles, then turn right, then head straight for two miles, and then turn left. But everything I just said is encoded as English. You, as the listener, need to understand English if you're going to be able to pull the meaning out of that sentence. So when we go to give a computer instructions, if we want to tell ideas to a computer, we can't use natural language. We have to use a computer language, also known as a programming language. So if we were to put this in computer code in a program, that might look like this. We would say, hey, to travel to the store, this is what you do. We define a function called travel to store. And the instructions inside the function are go straight for 10 miles, turn right, go straight for two miles, and then turn left. And each of those functions inside of here would also have to have their own definitions. Go straight would need to be defined, turn right would need to be defined, etc. So the idea here is that computers, they, they can't understand natural language like English and Spanish. So if we want to give instructions to a computer, we need to provide instructions in a programming language. And there are several different programming languages. There's more coming out every single year. JavaScript, Java, Python, C, C++. There's so many. And really, they all kind of get at the same idea, which is they give us a way to talk to the computer. They give us a language with which to give the computer instructions. And they're all very similar. They all have variables. They all have loops. They all have functions. So really, learning to program is bigger than learning a specific language. When you learn one, it's much easier to learn the others. So we've talked about how code encodes a higher level idea as symbols. So what's being encoded when we use a programming language? Well, this comes down to abstraction. When we're programming, when we're using a programming language, we're working at a very high level of abstraction. There's a lot going on under the hood um, that we don't have to worry about. That's at the low level of abstraction. So for example, if I wanted to write a program that makes Carol move, at a high level, when I'm writing my program in my programming language, all I have to do is say move, boom, the program's done. But when I go to run that, the computer actually converts that into what's called assembly code. And that's a completely different type of code, but that's a bit closer to what the computer actually ends up executing. So move actually turns into a bunch of a series of commands where the computer is moving information from memory box A to memory box B, adding and subtracting numbers, all to get Carol to move across the screen. But what's crazy is this isn't even the lowest level. Assembly code is not the lowest level. Each of the assembly code commands themselves 
get encoded into zeros and ones, and that is machine code. So at the low level, at the base of everything, the computer is really just cranking through a lot of zeros and ones. And the idea here is it's just like DNA. As the computer reads over this series of zeros and ones, it knows what to do. So it looks at the first eight and says, oh, this sequence of eight zeros and ones means I need to load. So I'll look at the next, what exactly am I loading? Oh, I'm loading the value 228. Where am I putting it? Oh, I'm loading it into the memory address 144 and so on. And it goes over this entire string of zeros and ones. And that ends up making Carol move across the screen. It's crazy. It's all numbers. Behind the scenes, everything is just numbers represented as zeros and ones. So really a program has three parts, input, processing, and output. So how is input really represented as a number? Well, every time I touch a key on the keyboard or click the mouse, this generates a unique number that gets sent to the computer. So if I were to click right here, that might send the number 34 to the computer. If I were to click right here, that might send the number 28 to the computer, things like that. So input is encoded as a number and that gets sent to the computer. Then a program processes the numbers, figures out what to do with them. And then once it knows, it has output. It then generates output, which is just more numbers that tell the computer to do certain things like display a certain color or play a certain sound. So if the output is the number 28, that might mean, oh, put a blue pixel in the top left corner of the screen, things like that. And this is all represented as zeros and ones. All of these numbers are represented using only zeros and ones. And we'll get into this later about exactly how this is possible, but just know that at the base of everything, it's all zeros and ones and everything's being represented as numbers. Luckily for us as the programmer, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to type out these zeros and ones to type our programs. We get to use a much higher level code. We get to use a programming language that encodes that massive sequence of zeros and ones. We don't have to worry about the zeros and ones. So that's all taken care of by the programming language. We get to work at a higher level of abstraction. So we get to focus on the big ideas rather than those nitty gritty details of which zeros and ones to type. So if we have a program, move, move, and turn left, this is written in JavaScript. This is a high level language. And when we go to run it, there's actually a special program called the compiler that takes our program and turns it into the proper machine code, the proper zeros and ones that actually get the computer to do, uh, to execute the program. So programs get compiled into machine code, which is just zeros and ones. So that is a crash course introduction to code. That's what code is. And in this unit, we'll be writing our own code. We'll be learning how to write our own programs that make the computer do what we want it to do. And it's all using code.